Good evening, everyone. I'm Blake uh, from Edge Environment. Uh, I've got a few case studies for you. Um, I'm going to fly through these because I know it's getting late. And um, uh, as Ian said, you should all have the registration forms in front of you. So if you can fill them out, leave them in the box. We'll be able to fill you in on all the um, gory details of each of these case studies when we get out to see you. Uh, that was the so last year, Edge Environment uh, delivered 200 waste assessments to businesses across the Northern Beaches um, under round one of the scheme. Uh, so we are now contracted under a second round with uh, the guys from Shorrock and we're going to deliver a further 250 uh, to the area. Last year we worked with some pretty awesome companies in the area, area as you'll see there. Um, pretty recognisable brands and also ones that we delivered some pretty significant waste outcomes with. Um, the Novotel themselves saved over $20,000 um, a year in their waste costs. So there is, um, even with, you know, an any scale of organisation, significant scope to look at waste services. Um, I picked a few here. Gabby's going to present three and I'm going to present three. Um, they're very uh, local businesses, I guess. They're a, bit, a little bit of this and that, a bit from everywhere. Um, Mill's display here is a signage company up in Warrywood. Um, they were, uh, the guy Craig there, the CEO, was uh, actually a very receptive um, person at the business and was really excited when we um, actually just knocked on his door to see what was going on there. We managed to save them a huge amount of money actually. I think it was about, uh, about $2,500 a year um, through soft plastics recycling. That was through their existing service provider. So that was a service that was available to them from their current provider, which, which their sort of, uh, I guess their waste service provider sales staff hadn't made them aware of. So it is, um, there is a bit of communication sometimes which you lose through changing, um, you know, uh, regional sales representatives and so on. That's not always communicated to you as a customer. So a good way to have a bit of a health check there. Um, PLU, we did a range of things. Uh, we worked intensively there actually with the staff and sorting in the kitchens and worked through a whole plan in there, in, in that commercial space, uh, being the kitchen, it, to improve separation of bottles, papers, or an organic waste, um, each of which, were, which we were able to deal with separately and save them um, some money again. Uh, AJ Aluminium were actually metal fabricators, so they're based up in Monavale, um, were a great bunch to work with, um, had significant scope to save money through packaging. All their aluminium and, meta and steel fascias and so on, which they were then working on, were delivered with plastic wrap and were de delivered on pallets uh, with wood and so on attached. And that alone, um, but through diverting those materials, were able to save them about $3,000 a year as well, um, purely uh, through separation of some really rudimentary packaging items. So these, these things are out there. Um, I guess the message for myself is you don't always get the full story necessarily from your waste service provider. Um, so allow us to come and make sure you're, you know, they're, they're treating you best um, and, and um, you're getting everything you can do. So over to Gabby quickly for three more. All right, guys, so um, I'll just say that it was quite hard to pick just three case studies out of the hundred that we did. Um, I ended up choosing an RSL, a, um, a surf shop, and also a cafe as well. So hopefully some of these relate to you guys. <laughs> um, so first of all, I've got um, Forestville RSL. Uh, so these guys were already doing quite a bit to recycle. Um, they had a cardboard baler, they had a glass crusher, uh, they had oil recycler. Um, and they also had a garbage crusher as well that was reducing the volume of their waste but not actually recycling, you know. Um, so after my visual assessment, um, I went in there, looked in their waste, looked in their bins. Um, the three main items I identified in the general waste was the organic food waste, soft plastic and co-mingled, so the, the rigid plastic and the aluminium. So Forestville were pretty keen to divert all three streams from landfill, which was really good for me <laughs> and them. Um, so first of all, we installed a pulp master machine. So this captured um, all their organic waste. So that was capturing their bones, their fish, their meat, their soiled napkins, um, and also room temperature oil. Uh, so that was really good. Um, the guys from Pulp Master were then able to negotiate with uh, their waste service provider, so Forestville RSL's waste service provider, uh, and they were able to negotiate a cheaper waste rate on their waste as well because they were taking out all the heavy stuff, all the heavy food and oils and everything like that. 
um, which was really good. So they, you know, started to save money immediately there. Um, they also implemented a co-mingled bin as well to capture all the aluminium containers and the rigid plastic. Um, they already had a glass crusher, so that was all getting taken care of as well. Um, we also got them a, a soft plastic collection as well. So we got someone coming and collecting all the soft plastics from their kitchen packaging uh, for free, which was really good. Um, so by taking out the majority of the recyclable items, they were able to reduce their waste collection. The saving of this has subsidised the rental of the Pultmaster machine, which is really good. So this year it's pretty much been cost neutral. Uh, which is fantastic. And then, you know, next year and the year after, as that waste levy increases, that's when they'll see the real cost savings of the Pultmaster machine. So there's also a couple of um, non-financial benefits as well. So there's um, less spillage and liquids in the bins and less smell. Um, there's improved labour efficiencies as well. So they don't need to take the bins out as much because the Pultmaster literally sits in the kitchen. You just pretty much swipe all the food in there. It's like kind of like a top loader washing machine. So you just swipe it all in, really efficient. Um, and also oh &S is improved as well because the bins are now lighter. So the staff are loving it and they're loving the fact that the RSL is giving them the opportunity to actually recycle. You know, they're knowing that they're, the food that they're cooking and they're th recycling is turning into, you know, biofuel and turning into organic fertiliser and, you know, that makes them feel really good. And, like, all the staff feel really good about it, which is great. Um, um, so my next slide is Aloha Surf. Um, so these guys, when I went to do the assessment, I opened the bin. They had literally a bin full of soft plastic. So all the surfboards are wrapped in soft plastic, all the apparel, for those of you who have clothing stores or any item really that comes from China, um, it's all wrapped in soft plastic. So we were, yeah, get going, yeah, okay, all right. Um, so we were able to um, reduce their waste by, I estimated by half, it was actually a lot more than that. So um, they've now reduced their bin collection from twice a week to once a fortnight. So, you know, that's purely one action, you know, and it's saving small surf shop in Manly a lot of money, which is really good, and recovering all that soft plastic, which is great. Um, next, I have the shop next door. So this is a, um, a small coffee shop that's convenient locate, conveniently located uh, right next to Aloha. Um, so these guys, I went in, they really wanted to reduce their organic waste, um, but they didn't necessarily have room for a worm farm. Um, and so what we did, what they did is started rebagging their coffee grinds. So they just rebag re their coffee grinds, pop them in a basket out the front, their customers come and take it away, put it on their worm farms, put it on their gardens um, and everything like that. And also they teamed up with Aloha next door and they started recycling their soft plastics with Aloha as well. They didn't quite have enough to um, get their own recycling collection but they teamed up with Aloha. So when I went back I asked, you know, have you guys been able to reduce your your bin lifts and save a bit of money. They said, we haven't been able to reduce them, but this summer we haven't increased them because last summer we had to increase it by double and this summer we have, you know, we just left it as the normal um, collection, which was a really good result for them as well. <coughs> 